Hey everyone, it's Haley, and today is Bookmas Day 11, so I'm going to be talking about the best books of 2021 according to you guys. I am so excited for this video. I think this is like the most exciting bookmas video for me because I just think it's so much fun and fascinating. So I'm really glad that I thought up this idea this year. But before we get into it, don't forget to click that subscribe button and then click that bell icon so you'll be notified whenever I post because I'll be posting a new video every single day for the entire month of December so you won't want to miss any of those. I will also have a link for the entire bookmas playlist as well as yesterday's video which was bookmas day 10, my five Five star predictions from last year. I reacted to the ones that I have read, so I'll have that link down below as well. But this idea was actually inspired by a beauty guru that I really enjoy watching, Ali Glines. She always gets like feedback, and I always love to involve you guys in my videos. But she'll release like Google Forms and then talk about like the best blushes or the best eyeshadow, like whatever, based on the feedback from those Google Forms. So I had a lot of fun doing this, and I'm actually trying to switch out another video that I was going to do for another topic for this survey because there were just so many responses like it was wild so thank you to everyone who participated in the Google form I definitely plan on doing more throughout the year I think it's going to be a lot of fun I also originally was going to do the best and worst books according to you guys in one video but I've decided to split it up because there were so many books that came up multiple times as part of this Google form I also asked you guys some questions about like how your reading year went and everything so I'm going to go through those and see what you guys said I didn't like write down notes for those because I figured we could just go through them now. So for context, I had 1,324 responses for the survey and the first question that was like a multiple choice or whatever question was how many books did you read this year? So it looks like most people read 30 to 50 books this year, which is pretty understandable. Like I feel like the average person who has like a full-time job or is a student or whatever, or really just the average reading speed, 30 to 50 books is really awesome. But remember, even one book is awesome. I did just realize that I put like 30 to 50 and then I did 50 to 75. So if you're 50, you could answer either of them, but oh well, it doesn't matter. It's just for Fun. So the next highest number of books that was read was 50 to 75 and that was 22.3% of people versus 24.2% of people. I'll have the pie chart on the screen because that's just going to make things easier. But the after that it was 75 to 100 and then after that oh no actually I read that wrong. After that it was 15 to 30 and then after that it was 75 to 100. 9.3% of people read 100 to 150 books which is awesome. Awesome. and 6.4% of people read 0 to 15 which like I said is also awesome and then it won't even show me but there are some people who said that they read 150 to 200 and 200 plus which is like I'm so jealous of you because I wish I could read that many but some people just have that reading speed. I also asked on a scale of 1 to 5, 5 being really enjoyed them, how like in general how much did you enjoy the books that you read this year and most people 66.3% said a four, which I feel like that's good. Like a three would be, I think, average. A four is really awesome. So three was the next response with 17%. And then five was the next response, which lucky you. And that was 15.7%. No one said that they would rate it a one, but 12 people unfortunately did say that they would rate their reading year a two. So I'm sorry for you. I also asked if you had a reading goal this year and 91.7% of people did and 8.3% percent of people did not. Then adding on to that one, if yes, did you reach your reading goal this year? And I did realize I should have said like, are you on track for your reading goal since I posted this like early November, but oh well. So 12.9% of people said not like applicable probably because the year isn't over yet or they just didn't have a reading goal. But 67.4% of people said that they did reach their reading goal and 19.7% said no, which is totally fine. Don't feel bad about yourself. If you didn't meet your goal, you can always just adjust it. So then you did meet it and it makes you feel better, which is what I do. And then I thought it'd be interesting to talk about going forward into 
into 2022. I should have also actually done like a question of what's your most anticipated release for 2022, but next year I'll do that. But the majority of people are hoping to read 50 to 75 books, so 26.1% of people. And then 30 to 50, it's kind of like exactly like the other pie chart that there was, except instead of 15 to 30 being next, it's 75 to 100. But other than that, it's pretty much the exact same as the other pie chart, which is awesome. So those are all the questions from the survey, other than the ones where like you input a response for the book. So let's get into the list of books that you guys said were your absolute favorites of 2021. These books didn't have to be published in 2021. I might, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to fit it in, but I might do a video where I talk about the best releases of 2021 because I did ask that in their survey. But as of now, these are just like books that people read in 2021. So obviously newer releases are going to be kind of more popular just because people are reading, like there's more people reading them, but there were some interesting responses to this. So the most popular favorite book that people read in 2021 was The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. I think this one is interesting because there was kind of a lot of controversy surrounding it as well. I'll link some resources down below to read on that, but I haven't really talked about the book much because I know some people took issue with it and I don't really feel comfortable recommending it. I did enjoy it when I read it though, and I understand why people have said it's their favorite because it is a really feel good read. Now, I didn't love it. I think my expectations were a little bit too high, but it definitely was a very, very hyped up book. So 39 of you said that The House in the Cerulean Sea was your favorite book of 2021. And following closely behind in the number two spot is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. So this one's different because the spoiler alert kind of for my next video, but The House in the Cerulean Sea, there was no one who put it as their worst book of 2021, but Addie LaRue did come up quite a bit in the worst books of 2021. So that definitely is a very divisive book, but I'm not surprised to see it on this favorites list because it has been so talked about. I know so many people were reading it and actually a lot of people are pretty sick of hearing about it. I still need to read it, but I definitely like... I'm kind of, I mean, I guess I am kind of surprised to see it in the favorites of the year list, just because I feel like the more hyped up a book is, the more people are kind of let down by it, but this one doesn't seem to be letting people down. I can't remember if I said it, but 35 of you responded with Addie LaRue as your favorite book of 2021, and those two books are the only ones that surpass the 30s. So the rest, there's actually two that are tied for 27 people saying it's their favorite book. The first of those two being Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. There is definitely been a resurgence in reading for the Grisha trilogy, the Six of Crows books, all of that because of the Netflix adaptation. And it's so lovely to see so many people starting to read it again. I think, yeah, Crooked Kingdom is also a little bit later in this list, but I'm so glad that people are reading like the real story of the Crows because they are kind of changed quite a bit. Their storyline is completely different in the adaptation. So it's really nice that there are people who are picking up the books prompted by the adaptation. So that's why I say these aren't all new releases, although I mean that one does kind of have a timely thing going on. But the next book that also has 27 people who responded with it as their favorite is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This book just seems to be like it has longevity because people are still talking about it and raving about it. I feel like Daisy Jones isn't quite as hyped up as Evelyn Hugo. It is, but I think it's partially because the format of Daisy Jones isn't going to mesh with everyone, so Evelyn Hugo more so a lot of people really enjoy. And I read it and really enjoyed it too, I just felt like it was a little bit overhyped, but it's nice to see that it's still on this list because it's been out for a while now, and I feel like it's been like three straight years of hype surrounding it. Next is A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J Mass, with 23 people saying it was their favorite book of 2021. I still need to read this one, it's like a beast, but it's nice to see that like the next book in the Court of Thorns and Roses series is returning to what the originals were in terms of like, I take issue with the fact that they said they were coming out with more books and the third one is so small. And then they came out with A Court of Silver Flames and it's huge. So it's just like such a difference between the two, but a lot of people seem to not have been disappointed by this one. I mean, I feel like if Sarah J Mass is coming out with a book, it's inevitably going to end up on this list, especially 
with like TikTok really <laughs> resurfacing the love for Sarah J Mass. Is it Mass or Moss? I haven't said, I think I just said Mass, but I think it's Moss. Now I can't remember. Next is kind of a similar situation, and that is Chain of Iron by Cassandra Clare. This had 16 people saying it was their favorite, and once again, a very popular author, so Cassandra Clare coming out with a book, I feel like it's inevitably going to be on this list. But this is the second book of the Last Hours series, I believe is what it's called. So it's still set in the same Shadowhunter world, and everyone goes wild for that. I personally have kind of, I'm not a big fan of series, so I have given up on it, but they still do very well. Following that is Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid once again. 15 people said this was their favorite book of 2021 and I'm glad that this book is still getting some love. I really enjoyed it. I do understand that the format definitely isn't going to be for everyone, but it's something that really worked well for me. I quite loved it. Also with 15 people saying it was their favorite is The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. This book has been, it also has longevity because I feel like it's been talked about for so many years now, like even longer than Evelyn Hugo. But I know that this book has been recommended on Book Talk a lot, so it definitely has had kind of a resurgence which is really nice. I still need to read it. I still have it on my TBR, but maybe I will read it for a reading vlog in 2022. Let me know if you would like to see that, but it definitely, like, I've heard amazing things about it, that it's just this beautiful love story. It's gonna tear out your heart, so I shall see eventually. That was a really weird way for that sentence to go. Next, with 13 people saying it was their favorite is The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood. This is another book that has been super, super hyped up on TikTok, so I'm not surprised to see it on this list. What I did find surprising though is the Spanish love deception has also been really hyped up on TikTok, and I didn't see that on this list as frequently as The Love Hypothesis. I'm really trying to get my expectations down for The Love Hypothesis before I read it, but I mean, this isn't helping because so many people seem to really love this adult romance, so I have very high expectations. Gonna try and lower them, honestly, but it seems to be not overhyped, according to most people. Also, 13 People's Favorite is Legend Born by Tracy Dion. I read this book this past year and I also really enjoyed it. It didn't quite make it to my favorites list, but I don't know if this video will be out yet, like before or after, I think it's after, but it's on my almost favorites list of the year. I loved the introduction to the series and the characters and everything, and this book has also been getting hyped up on TikTok. I'm not even on TikTok, I just know from like what other people say, but so many of the books on here I recognize from that. There's actually like a couple that I haven't even heard of that I'm gonna have to look up, but Legendborn is a really cool like King Arthur sort of thing. It's very interesting and a lot of people really enjoyed it, obviously. Next, with 12 People's Favorite, is one that it warmed my heart to see so many times on this list, and that is Lovely War by Julie Berry. I hyped the crap out of that book last year because I loved it, and it's still, like, I will still hype that book because I just was blown away, and it was my favorite book that I read last year, and I'm so glad to see so many of you that it was your favorite of this year. It's just such a beautiful love story. Like, it's a historical fiction, World War One. it's, so heartbreaking, but like beautiful. And I'm so glad that you guys are reading it. Next is People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry, which 12 people also said was their favorite. And I really enjoyed this one. It made it onto my favorites list of the year, but I get it's like really hard to narrow it down and just have one favorite. I know that this was a challenge, but People We Meet on Vacation, Beach Read showed up a couple of times. I feel like Emily Henry is just quickly making her way to being a very well-established romance author slash chiclet author. And and her books do, like, they live up to all the hype for me. I think she's very talented. Also having some longevity here is Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. And this one had 12 people saying was their favorite as well. I'm so glad that people are continuing to read this book because it is such an adorable romance and I just absolutely loved it. It's hilarious and all around a great read. One of the ones that I hadn't heard of before, but I feel like I can kind of picture the cover. I think it's white with like stuff on it, but it's a good girl's guide to murder. And I don't know the author so I will look that up. Okay, yes, that is what I was picturing the cover as. So it's by Holly Jackson, and I thought that one was new this year, but now there's actually a sequel, so that's confusing to me. I don't know anything about this book, but it's a mystery, and it seems to be set in high school, so kind of in the vein of uh, One of Us is Lying by, what's her name? Karen M. McManus. I am having so many struggles right now, but a lot of you guys seem to really love that one, but a lot of people are really into mysteries and thrillers. I'm not 
not so much, but I can see why that one would be so popular. 12 people also said that The Starless Sea by Aaron Morgenstern was their favorite. This one has a little longevity too. It's the author of The Night Circus and this is her other, like her only other book, I believe, other than The Night Circus. And it came out a couple years ago. I haven't read it yet, but I do have it. But people do seem to not be disappointed by it, obviously. Next is Crescent City by Sarah J Mass. This came with 10 people saying that it was their favorite book that they read in 2021. So definitely a lot of people have really loved it still. I personally read it this past year. It was the longest book that I've read this year and I didn't love it. I know a lot of people say that it's her best book ever, but for me, I was really, really bored. And if I hadn't like listened to the audiobook while I was physically reading it or alternated between the two, I don't think I ever would have gotten through it, but I did get through it. And I'm glad that you guys are enjoying it. Like, I like when you enjoy things that I don't enjoy as much because at least someone does. That sounds brutal, but I don't mean it in a brutal way. Also with 10 people saying it was their favorite is Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo. I feel like some of the Six of Crows people, maybe they just haven't read Crooked Kingdom yet. Like I love Six of Crows, but Crooked King, Crooked, ooh, wow. Crooked Kingdom is my favorite. I really love Crooked Kingdom, even though it like absolutely broke my heart into a million tiny pieces. I did still love it. The Midnight Library by Matt Haig also had 10 people saying that it was their favorite of the year. And I actually ended up ordering this book because I just, I wanna know what all the hype is about. And I was really intrigued by the synopsis that I read. So I understand, I feel like this seems like a book lover's book but I'm excited to read it. Now with nine people saying it was their favorite is These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong, which I so badly need to read. I have the sequel now and I just need to read it. Like the sequel for this one came out quite recently, so it's not on this list, but I know people have been loving it. It's Romeo and Juliet, but in the 1920s in Shanghai, like everything about it seems perfect. So I'm glad that the hype is still here. It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover also had nine people saying it was their favorite. It's been a long time since I've read a Colleen Hoover book, but I think that this is her most recent, I believe. Like, I feel like I can picture the cover for this one as well. And it's really, once again, not surprising. Colleen Hoover is another very popular author, so I would have been surprised if she wasn't on this list. Now with eight people saying is their favorite is Rule of Wolves by Lee Bardugo. This is the sequel to King of Scars that I still need to read, so I'm glad that people have loved it. That makes me feel a little bit better because it didn't come up much as like the worst books for 2021, if it ever did. I don't remember seeing it at all in the spreadsheet that I was looking at, but all the titles started to look the same eventually. <laughs> then there's also One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston, which had eight people saying it was their favorite. This is the newest book by the author of Red, White, and Royal Blue. So they have two books on here and I still need to read One Last Stop, but it doesn't seem to be quite as popular as Red, White, and Royal Blue, but eight people did still say it was their favorite. Clockwork Princess by Cassandra Clare also oddly showed up on this list. I thought that was so so random, but it did. That's actually, I think that's the last book of the Infernal Devices trilogy. So it just seems very random, but this also had eight people saying it was their favorite book of the year. And then finally, I wanted to mention this one because it's been out for a long time. So I tried to like cap it off at a certain number, but with seven people saying it was their favorite book of the year is The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. This book has been out for a really long time and people are still loving it. And I'm really glad that they are because I tried reading it twice and it just just didn't work for me, but I love the concept of it. So I'm glad that there are people out there who it's working for and still are continuing to love it. Okay, so those are all of the books that you guys said were the best books of 2021. I'll try and see if there's a way where I can like compile the data and link it for you guys so you guys can see all of the favorites and everything. But I had so much fun with this and I'm really excited to do the worst books one. I just think it's really interesting to get your opinion on things and it just, I had a blast with this one, if you can't tell. So thank you guys so much for participating, if you did. And if you didn't, that's totally okay. I usually post these things on Instagram, so it's just the easiest like place to communicate with you guys. Although I did post it in the community tab on YouTube, and I think I tweeted it, even though I don't really use Twitter that much anymore. I did try and get it out there as much as I possibly could. But if you do want to make sure you're not missing these things, Instagram is the best place to follow me, and it's just at Hillian Bookland, just like on here. But that's going to be 
be all for today's video. Tomorrow for Bookmas Day 12, I believe it's another reading vlog, but now my computer has gone to sleep so I can't double check. Either way, don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss Bookmas Day 12 and the rest of Bookmas. And thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in another new video soon. Bye! I just realized after turning off the camera that I'm so stupid. Tomorrow's Bookmas Day 12 and it's going to be the worst books according to you guys. The follow-up. I'm sorry. I don't know how I forgot that. I'm also so close to the camera, but I'll see you guys tomorrow.